Yo, how's it going everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're looking at the follow-up to a horror franchise which made a massive splash in the survival horror genre, as well as being a next-generation experience for the PS2 and original Xbox. We're checking out Silent Hill 2, developed by Team Silent and published by Konami, this is to the PS2, Xbox, and PC in 2001. This is one of those games that even back when it released stuck with me long after clearing it and continues to be a gut-punching mind-bender every time I come back to it. But before we get too much further, let's check out the story. You play the role of James Sunderland, who lost their wife Mary three years prior to ending up in Silent Hill after receiving a letter from her telling them to come back to their special place. You make your way to the fog-laden town and begin your search to see if it's really possible that maybe Mary's still alive after all. You'll meet some of the town's inhabitants along the way and tangle with several nightmarish monsters and villains, some of which will be a shock. Switch on your radio and throw some fresh batteries in your flashlight, we're going back to Silent Hill. Gameplay-wise, you've got a third-person survival title with some free-roaming and static camera angles like the original. The big jump here is the town itself, where now you're going to be exploring a fair bit more of it, and there's some wild stuff in the outskirts and inner city. You have a variety of melee and ranged weapons, and upon clears of high ranks, you can get special weapons if you look close enough for them on New Game Plus runs. Going through the streets is going to present a lot of horrors, items, and locations to discover, and much like the original, you'll move between the physical world and the other world. The motif of punishment is in the forefront for majority of the gameplay, and the enemies and story beats imply it as a motive to great effect. The things you'll see and do throughout this journey is going to get pretty gnarly, even early on. The combat is very similar to the first entry, including chargeable melee attacks, and several ranged weapons like pistols, shotguns, and rifles. New to this entry is now you can strafe during combat and in your ready state. Encounters happen in tight corridors often and also wide open spaces, and the inhabitants of Silent Hill will always spin the block to smoke that ass. There's also several points where you'll be escorting a partner and you'll be responsible for keeping them alive since they can't attack. The characters you'll meet along the way will all seem a bit off since each is going through their own sets of trials and tribulations, all of which manifest in different ways which I won't spoil here. Just know there are some heavy implications and at times disturbing reveals throughout the game runtime. The visuals and parts also get pretty wild here, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Puzzles return and they're implemented in a few different ways compared to the first game, although they'll have a few similarities. New here is picking puzzle difficulty, and even on lower settings, they will still be just as if not more cryptic than the originals. Many puzzles require either an item or a combination to unlock or trigger. There's also a few items along the game that you collect that seem unnecessary, but they're actually part of unlocking the game's best ending. Graphics-wise, Silent Hill 2 was developed using soft image technology and a modified version of the previous engine used in Silent Hill 1. This was a big jump visually compared to the original, which was immediately noticeable once you start your journey. Silent Hill looks great here, and you'll see a lot of the town's areas and can explore a much larger amount of it than in the previous entry. Environments are shrouded in the mysterious fog, and the surroundings are much more visible this go around, even without your flashlight, which is rich in detail. The cutscenes feel much closer to the gameplay and looks here, and was one of the defining features on the PS2 hardware where you could see what it was capable of. Enemies are grotesque abominations and revolve around punishment and morality. You'll see some pretty sick stuff here that makes the first entry seem tame in spots. Much like the puzzles, imagery can be shocking and at times gruesome. The lighting effects are also much improved over the first entry, and these make for some genuinely scary moments where light and shadow will mess with you. Especially when enemies like the nurses and Pyramid Head come into the equation, you'll see some gnarly lighting effects, amongst other things. Character designs in and out of cutscenes also look very close to each other, and it's interesting to see how much changed in just two years of development. Environments are highly detailed, and even now, these still look incredible. From the textures of the bowling alley floor to the walk-in freezer stuff with who knows what, the attention to detail is very sharp. Some areas will shear and rotate, and the camera work can be a little bit disorienting at times, but cinematically, this still holds up well. The hotel in Toluca Lake is one of the craziest looking areas when it shifts and floods, subtly adding a dose of tension. Unlocking each area of the map uncovers more and more twisted sights, and beyond the roadblocks, there's a lot to find. The enemies are insane this entry, and as mentioned earlier, encapsulate punishment. The designs for the enemies are intense. Figures bound in various ways and creatures spawned from nightmares will be a staple on your visit. The further you progress into madness, the more terrifying some of these designs get, especially in regards to the encounters with Pyramid Head and several other encounters that are genuinely creepy and grotesque. Character animations and designs are also a jump from the original PlayStation, with facial animations being pretty good especially for the time. The animation in combat also looks good here from bashing monsters with various blunt instruments, still has its impact. There are six possible endings to get on successful clears. Two of them are joke endings, but the other four are wonderfully crafted and at times heart wrenchers. Sound wise, Silent Hill 2 is in a league of its own, especially with its soundtrack. Composer Akira Yamaoka returns, and the vibes are all over the shop. The Twin Peaks guitar riffs are plenty, and with the whimsical guitar are moments of industrial mayhem. Much of the original, the opening tune rips, and the music only gets better from there. The sound team certainly took advantage of the new sound hardware, and this aspect alone cooks something fierce. The dialogue is truly something else here, and the delivery seems disjointed at parts, though after doing some research, it turns out this is intentional. Conversations have this eerie feeling, and as you meet more of the town's people, the tones can and often turn 
turn on a dime as each faces their own morality trials. While James is going through his own moral quandaries, others are going through it too and it shows in their dialogue. The ending epilogue, depending on which ending you achieve, can be a downright tearjerker, as well as many of them being also tense moments. In-game audio is also pretty crispy. Here, nearly every movement has some sort of sound bite and a lot of audible detail. Swinging heavier melee instruments will make James strain as you begin to swing, and the impact on enemies delivers a satisfying thwack. Ranged weapons also have some base to them, especially the game's shotgun, and your radio now creates static when enemies are near as opposed to the ringing from the first game. The sounds that enemies make are also pretty alarming here. There's an enemy that you'll see a good bit of that slinks around the ground that makes a really odd sound as it moves, and when it springs to its feet, will spit gas at you. The nurses let off a wail as they move in to attack you, and the slow clang of Pyramid Head's blade are sounds that will sear into memory. Bosses will also have some gnarly sound effects and battle cries, and impacts hit on something different here, which is yet another part that stuck with me even years later. Silent Hill 2 was one of those games that many remember fondly, and was one of the first times that I remember being astonished by a game going into a new console generation. The graphics, story, and gameplay hit heavily back then, and playing this 20 some odd years later, it absolutely holds up. The series would have several sequels, though the original four entries from Team Silent are truly something special. Playing this again has me genuinely curious about how the remake will be when it releases next year sometime. It's a tough act to follow, but we'll see how it all shapes up soon enough. Silent Hill 2 gets a 9 out of 10 and comes highly recommended to survival horror fans and fans of cerebral horror since this dives into some pretty dark territories throughout the game's run. This is one of my favorite Silent Hill entries as well as one of my favorite horror games, and it's no surprise that a lot of people consider this to be a masterpiece in the genre and a strong title of the console generation. The original PS2 version is getting expensive in the western regions, but the PAL and Japanese versions are much cheaper. The Xbox versions are also a bit cheaper than the PlayStation versions as well, so if you're seeking out a physical copy, just keep that in mind. There was a combo pack for the PS3 and Xbox 360 which had Silent Hill 2 and 3, but the source code and original audio files were lost and had to be reconstructed. Though there's honestly better ways to play these games than what's offered on that HD compilation in particular. If you're a fan of the franchise, this one is a must play, and if you can find original copy for a good price, it's a certified belter. Otherwise, play this one however you can and be prepared for some mind-bending gameplay. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. If you find these videos helpful, that's awesome. Glad to use as a resource. Check back often. We'll have more reviews and commentaries coming from the near future. But until then, take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.